Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and in this video we're going to be looking at a way of painting up an army of High Fleet Leviathan using some of the models from the new Warhammer 40k 10th edition box Leviathan that Games Workshop sent us through for review. So we're going to approach it in that classic army painting style, which means we want something that looks really cool, striking on the table, but that we can get done in a reasonable amount of time. So let's paint. To begin with, I've primed the models as just using a Chaos Black Primer. It's the can I had to hand. Uh, it might even have been Color Forge, uh, Matte Black, whatever it was, doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to base coat the whole model using Screamer Pink. And I'm going to use the airbrush for this. I think when I'm army painting, particularly if I'm going to be doing something like Tyranids, uh, an airbrush is an invaluable tool. Um, but if you don't have one, hopefully there's some tips in this that you can still apply to your own work. But we're just giving it a nice base coat of the Screamer Pink. And I've thinned this probably two drops of thinner to every drop of paint, spraying at 25 PSI, 0.4 millimeter needle and nozzle in our Harder and Steenbeck Signature Series Infinity. So over the base coat of the pink, we're gonna do a really, really heavy sort of zenithal pre-shade. And I'm using ivory rather than white here because I wanna try and keep it sort of slightly more natural, all the tones, I know it's a crazy alien monster thing, but I think when you use an off-white, uh, a slightly warm one like ivory, I think you do get slightly nicer, more natural tones on the model. And when I say a heavy zenithal, I basically mean that everything facing up towards the light is gonna be really bright, and it's only those sort of deepest shadows that will still see the pink. Now over all of the skin, flesh, basically anything that isn't the hard chitinous shell stuff, um, I'm going to uh, spray a 50-50 mix of Magos Purple and Dreadful Visage uh, contrast paint. So this is a sort of grey pinky purple colour. Um, this is thinned again 50-50 with thinner, so for every drop of the 50-50 mix we add a drop of thinner. Uh, and takes a few coats to get it, but you can see the difference there. The one on the left, we've given a nice solid, you know, couple of coats of that, uh, and the one on the right hasn't had any. Uh, and it just, I really like how it tints it. Um, I've did a couple of testers with a much lighter skin. Um, that looked really nice as well. If you prefer that look, I'd suggest you go and watch the recent albino skin bin uh, video I did for a, a Seraphon model, and just use that instead for that stage. Now, I really like using oil paints and I love the look they give you and this is my take on Leviathan. You know, it's not going to look exactly like the box art at all, um, but I do think it ends up looking really cool and I like keeping the colours fairly close together. So I wanted to do uh, sort of an oil wash and filter at the same time uh, over the bits that we've just painted. So I was going to use a pink. Now the pink that I had uh, access to, Faded Flesh, it wasn't quite red enough basically so I've just mixed a little bit of red in uh, you might find you have a pink oil that's perfect for it if you don't red and white whatever everybody knows how to mix pink I'm sure now when I'm mixing up oils to get the right color I only add a little bit of mineral spirit in here I'm using a synthetic brush give them a swish together just to get the color I want and then when I've got the color I want I'll dilute the wash down further just wanted to say a massive thank you to all of you that are supporting us over on patreon um, you're allowing myself and Andy to create videos for here each week, videos for there each week, but also to make videos that we really want to make on stuff that we think is cool. Um, and we massively appreciate it. We're having an awful lot of fun doing it and there's a lot coming down the pipeline. So thanks for your help. But a like and a subscribe does make a big difference over here as well. So say once I've mixed the color up that I like, dilute it down. And I want to get this wash to a consistency where it's going to kind of look like your classic wash that you would get, you know, in acrylic wash pot from Games Workshop or whatever. So I'm testing it out on the side of the dish. And if it was over diluted, we'd be seeing little bits of the, the oil floating around. It would like it was separated. But this looks nice and thin, but still staying together. And I'm just going to wash that all over those areas. And um, we don't need to varnish the model or anything like that. As long as this acrylic paint has dried before we put the oil on, we're not going to have any issues. And we're not scrubbing away at it with a brush or anything like that. It's nothing's going to happen. And I hope you like this effect. I love this kind of effect. It's kind of similar to when I pin washed using like a, a lighter color on black armor. I love the way how a recess wash doesn't need to be darker necessarily. Uh, on a model. Now one thing I did want to show you, um, the reason I use these Abtalon oils often, it's not just the colours available but also their fast drying properties. So I've used uh, Abtalon oils which are, have a, an additive in them which make them faster drying and I've also just used normal white spirits here which will evaporate fairly quickly. 
and this is all real time now so I've just taken I've applied the wash on the model I've got a hairdryer off camera I've got it on medium heat medium power we don't want the power crank right up because it will just blow the wash all around but I'm probably holding it about 10 inches or so away from the model on a medium power and I'm just moving the model around in it so I'm not focusing on any one area for too long and you'll see just how quickly it gets it dry enough for us to continue working on the model. Now if I was doing say 20 termagants, which hopefully lots of you new players are going to be doing, um, by the time you finish the 20th wash the first one's probably dry anyway um, so there's nothing to worry about but I thought it'd be useful sort of showing it as it were in, in real time so you can see how that's almost completely dry now, touch dry, um, just those deepest recesses there's a bit in. Um, and that's the difference that that oil filter has made on the left compared to the one on the right. So you can see it's given us that pink in the deep recesses, but it's also just tinted uh, that surface. And I'm really, really happy with the finish um, that it's given us, or the look rather, it's given us to the skin. Now for the carapace, I desperately wanted to use Leviathan Purple because of the name. But I tried a few different purples and I actually think Luxian Purple, which is another contrast paint, I think it's a bit nicer. Um, it's not quite as dark. Uh, as Leviathan and just applying this like a contrast paint really I've got it on my palette thinned it with a tiny bit of contrast medium and I'm just base coating all the uh, the carapace in it and then all the weird little I don't know what they are the recess bits because it's really hard doing a Tyrion video when you don't know the names of everything um like all the different constituent bits of the uh, of the, the the creature um but all the wet areas it connects where the joints are um and the little weird sort of ribby bits um I'm going to just wash in uh, Magos Purple, again, another contrast paint. Gave that, I think, two coats to get the finish that you see here. And the only other thing I've done here is blacked out um, the areas of the carapace and the claws that I want to be a different colour. Now I'm going to give the whole model just a couple of thin coats of satin varnish just to unify the finish. Um, this isn't going to be the final finish of the model, but some areas of it are quite glossy and making it quite hard to sort of read and, uh, and look at. And then to highlight, Again, when we're army painting, I like to use fewer paints if possible because I think it's just more efficient. So on my palette, I already have Luxian Purple and I already have uh, the Ivory Bottle out from doing the airbrush stage earlier. So I've mixed those two paints together. The Ivory will not only lighten up the purple, but it will also give it a bit of body. Um, and equally, the contrast paint will tint the Ivory and also give it that slightly uh, almost like glaze medium consistency that you get so the working times quite good with it and it's really warm at the moment here in the UK and paint is drying very quickly and you can see all I do is just draw tons and tons of little dashes towards the bottom end so I'm starting away from the edge and drawing towards it you see the difference when I was using hull red to do it over the claws to what I was doing over the carapace armor um, you can see how quickly you could you could watch it drying basically as it was happening um, and then to highlight that further again I just mix a little bit of the ivory into the whole red um, I wanted to get that red claw vibe going with Leviathan I love some of the old the old artwork for them but I wanted to just make it so I like it basically I didn't want it to look like old Leviathan stuff and I didn't really want it to look like the new take on Leviathan I wanted it to be how I enjoy sort of imagining it. Um, so to push the red further on it, I've just taken, um, hmm, it's just flashed up and I can't remember now. It's either Blood Angels Contrast or Flesh Terrors Contrast, whatever one flashed up on the screen. I think it was Flesh Terrors. Um, I don't think I did one with Blood Angels I didn't like it. So Flesh Terrors Contrast over it and it just gives that nice sort of deeper red uh, vibe to them and now I do go in with satin varnish again because I liked the finish it gave me I thought actually I'll do that finish across the whole model itself very very few things left to do now so this is a super efficient way of getting your army done on the tentacly bits I just wanted to add a little bit of um, shine to them make them look a bit minging basically and I'm using wet effects here by MIG and I've got a little bit of mineral spirits just to thin it down with uh, and then I'm just going to wash it over the tentacle areas. Now we do want to be careful here because it does act like a wash or it will run into the areas and I don't want to get it on the rest of the model. So that's why I'm using a, a fairly small brush uh, and just being careful where I'm putting it. You could use gloss varnish for this, absolutely. I just like the finish that Wet FX gives. It's not super high gloss and I like to use really high gloss for doing the little black eyeballs. I love shiny black eyes on things like demons uh, and tyranids. I think it looks fantastic uh, so I've used the gloss varnish here for the eyes and again other than the fact that it's 
a higher gloss, it's also a lot thicker and I can control it. Whereas if I'd used the wet effects on the eyeballs, it would have washed in all around them and, and I think you would lose it, it would just look messy, which is what I didn't want to happen. And then all of a sudden, once the base is done, which we just do the usual way um, for our, our YouTube bases, um, you're done. And, and the model, I absolutely love how these look and I love how quick they were to do. There's, I'm going to be doing another NID video very, very soon, which is a sort of grimdark take on army painting that Ken's done his in. Um, and again, it's a very efficient, quick way um, of getting the army done. One of the big things I've realized with painting a few different NID models up is once you've got the bits done that we've sort of done in this video, you you know exactly how you're going to be painting 90% of your army, which is fantastic when it comes to sort of planning and, and efficiency sort of thing. Um, now, this is, I say, this is my take on Leviathan. You may find that the skin is a little too dark compared to the traditional one. So as I said earlier, if you prefer the lighter one, go check out that Albina recipe. But for me, I love how it's that little bit closer uh, to the, the, the shell color, uh, that, that sort of slightly less variety um, uh, in tones there. But I was, I was genuinely surprised how nice these look for the time investment that's gone into them. So if you're on the fence about doing a Nid Army, I'd really, really recommend having a go. The models in this Leviathan box for the Tyranids are outstanding. Um, they build beautifully. All the little pegs, you just pop them in, pin wash in a bit of that ultra thin um, plastic glue, and, and, and you're good to go. Um, there's You've got these little sculpts like these Von Ryan's Leapers, you know, that, that are their character level models, and you've just got this lovely little unit of three of them in there. Really great size, um, tons of character. Uh, in them. So if you're painting nids, I hope you found this video useful, even if you're not going to copy the scheme uh, blow for blow. If you do have a go at painting your army in this scheme, I would love you to tag us in it on social media because I would love to see what a whole army would look like. Now, if you've got any questions about what I've done, any of the products, any of the techniques, the colours, just let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks ever so much for your support. Hit like if you've enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button if you're not and the little notification bell to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. And I'll see you next time. If you've liked any of the models in this video and you fancy having an army of them yourself, but perhaps you don't have the time or wherewithal to get it done, consider dropping us an email at commissions at cultofpaint.com and maybe Ben can sort you out. <laughs>